morning my soccer universe uh, it's a big anniversary that's why I'm wearing this Spain shirt uh, number 27 which was personalized for me for the 2006 World Cup that's the 2006-7 uh, shirt why do I wear Spain not because they played so great yesterday but no it's the 20th anniversary of one of the most remarkable results in Austrian soccer history and I'm gonna make a special video about that uh, after this one that will post maybe a little bit later this day if you're interested a little bit on the story behind the Spanish beat town of Austria it's a quite interesting one and is telling of how Austrian soccer is was thinking and now again is thinking so but there were actually quite a few exciting games yesterday uh, I watched two and I switched halftime because I didn't necessarily think that it was over but I thought maybe, I uh, don't jinx it, well, a little bit that, on that later. I thought that the standout ties between Switzerland and Denmark, but I decided not to watch that one. Uh, the other two that were interesting me was Bosnia against Greece and uh, uh, Norway, Denmark. Uh, a little bit more, um, I expected... To be honest, I was not interested in Italy or in Spain really because I don't I don't like to see beat downs that much. Although we have a video about the beat down, um, I just decided that's maybe of the three that I find competitive maybe the least interesting one. Uh, and for most of the time it was because Switzerland really thoroughly dominated Denmark and uh, made the 1-0 uh, through Freuler in the 19th minute. I think there was a little bit of hand involved, but uh, goal stood. Schalke in the 66th made a wonderful wide range shot. Um, I like wide range shots uh, a lot and if they hit the upper uh, corner, that to me is always a beauty and I, from all the goals I could see, this was probably the, at least the most spectacular one. Uh, doesn't need to be the best one because there was one um, that we'll talk about later that was also really, really nicely done. Uh, and then when Mbolo uh, kind of rolled the ball into the net in the 76th, I mean it was kind of weird, I think Akanji Headed it towards Mbolo who got a touch on it and then the Danish defense makes a mess of it. It's 3-0 for Switzerland, everything, everyone thinks game over. And so when it was 3-1 in the 84th through Zanka, I think you were, that was just okay, consolation goal. Gutschar makes it 3-2 in the 88th, game on. And then, and you gotta see that goal to believe it. Uh, Dahl's guard gets the equalizer in uh, three minutes into stoppage time. Watch that goal of how nervous the Swiss got. They cannot clear the ball. The ball is jumping. They just get half touches on it. And the goal is one of the craziest goals ever. The goalkeeper needs to punch it out. It's as simple as that. Uh, make your presence uh, be felt, but not uh, absolute watched that one. Um, now, the other game in the group was Ireland-Georgia and yeah, that was a really nice free kick uh, to make it 1-0. That I think is right up there uh, with the wide range shot from Schalke. So Ireland wins by a slim margin 1-0. Uh, so uh, they get two, two narrow wins but are leading the group at the moment. So six points, you cannot fault them for that. Uh, Switzerland should be leading group but they didn't um, have four points uh, Denmark with only one game so the both of them had two games then Denmark with only one game uh, one point and Gibraltar and Georgia right now on the bottom, at the bottom of the group Group F was another great game uh, but let's get first the uh, two others out of, out of the way Romania, Ferry Islands 4-1 um, quite what you would expect the ferry goal came from um, a penalty kick other than that I think um, it was the typical um, you score a lot of goals but none of them are already that pretty I think the second one by uh, Romania was uh, worth watching 
Uh, Malta, Spain, Morata gets Spain two goals. Uh, Spain dominates Malta without being in any way convincing. Um, so yeah, what, there's not much more that I can say. Morata in the 31st and the 73rd. Uh, seems to be the uniform striker now for Spain, uh, which I find a little bit confusing, but you know, because uh, half a year ago, a few months ago, when he was at Chelsea, you thought he's completely uh, lost it. Now he's back at scoring ways uh, with Spain and Atletico Madrid. But we really got to talk about Norway, Sweden. That's the game that I uh, saw the second half of. Um, Norway got an, uh, the, a goal in the 41st minute, with, with, which was offside. The linesman didn't get it. And it was one of those offsides where the goalkeeper was ahead of the last defender. And this is something that gets rarely... Uh, if it gets called, it's really difficult to see. So uh, there was... The goalkeeper was out, but there was only one defender on the back. And therefore, it was a pretty darn clear offside goal. But yeah, Jonsson's goal stood. Uh, and then I switched to the game in the second half. I mean, I did write my post on the wonderful France shirt at the same time. So, you know, I was half listening, half watching. I had the impression that um, at the beginning, Norway had a little bit more of the game. But uh, Sweden, of course, dominating possession. I mean, we know Sweden is the more talented team uh, but Norway actually was dangerous uh, had one chance and then they actually got the goal through King in the 59th minute and I thought wow upset is on uh, because ahead of the game I would say uh, Norway is a decent team I mean they gave Spain a little bit of trouble although it was more Spain uh, not converting uh, than Norway being that, that good but there was chances to make it 2-2 so um, it could have ended with a great result for Norway there as well but it didn't and so I thought ahead of half again yeah Sweden will uh, if they get a draw it will be good but they probably should win this one 2-0 upset on well uh, so I was focusing more on my writing again and you know how I'm this France shirt is an absolute gorgeous beauty and uh, almost impossible to get these days, I also have to say, so um, what can you do? Uh, Sweden got a penalty, uh, I think justifiably so, uh, that Granqvist really botched. However, the uh, rebound was converted by Klaasson and it was really funny because the penalty was at the end where from a, uh, a spectator's view the left side is the Norwegian sector and the right side is the Swedish sector and you could see penalty missed all the Norwegians jump up and the Swedes are kind of like that and then immediately it's the other way around the, it is converted at 2-1 you still think yeah Norway uh, can get something maybe uh, because you know you just you didn't give up anything so far but Sweden at that moment it was all Sweden playing and putting pressure on Norway and you could see that Norway was actually uh, getting a little bit nervous uh, hanging in there um, and it was then Quaison uh, Quaison I don't know how to pronounce him I honestly have not heard of him before, prior to the international break but he already made now his second goal that I'm aware of uh, May, tries a shot from outside of the box, gets little deflected, goes into the goal, 86 minutes, it's 2-2 two, two, and we have another Scandinavian classic uh, on. It gets even better because Sweden is clearly seeing, we have the upper hand, we gotta go in for, for the kill and in the 91st minute, I mean it was just 90 minutes over, I think it was 5 or 6 sec seconds into stoppage time, Sweden gets the go-ahead goal uh, through Quaison again. It's 3-2 and you would even have to say it probably was deserved because they really at that moment dominated uh, Norway so much that it was almost inevitable, uh, this result. Well, with that, 
suddenly uh, Norway of course needed to get it going again and there was an uh, injury that was kind of like because it was only three minutes shown and I think it happened in the 93rd minute there was an uh, injury break and what happened that overtime gets extended and it uh, they really took a long time to treat the injury uh, also has to be said uh, probably I, d I don't know. Anyway, Norway gets another chance. They get a corner. The goalkeeper comes out uh, and the call comes in and said, now if the goalkeeper makes a 3-3, I'm really gonna lose it. Well, the goalkeeper didn't make the 3-3, but it was Kamara who heads it in. A corner that honestly was poorly defended by Sweden. Uh, yes, it went, the kick went more towards the penalty spot then in ahead of the goal but I really thought that either the goalkeeper has to come out more decisively or that just needs to be a more defenders. I mean you, this has to be better defended. Just saying like that. It ends 3-3. Absolute classic the handshake between the two Swedish coaches. I mean Lagerbeck is now with um, the former Swedish and Icelandic coaches now with Norway and Jan Johansson, he shook hands and you could see there was a good game but Johansson was not happy about that one. So great game, I really enjoyed the second half, as I said I was writing to it but I watched pretty, pretty, pretty much from uh, when Sweden made it, uh, scored the penalty re rebound from that, that moment I was done with my post and I really was watching um, and it was enjoyable. Uh, and that leaves us with group J. Uh, again, let's get the minor results out of the way. Armenia, Finland, 2-0. Uh, if you watch the first first goal, the, sco uh, the scorer, after scoring, hits his shin or knee at the goalpost in the most awful manner. Uh, I think it, either Puki gave the assist or he scored it, but uh, did not look well. Um, and Italy, Liechtenstein. I actually did not expect what was happening. Italy beating Liechtenstein 6 0. I thought this might be 2 2 3 0. But Italy, I actually like what, 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 what I'm seeing. They're not playing the Italian style, they're playing a possession uh, based game. They have uh, many young players, and then they have the old guy Cagliarella in there. Where you have to wonder a little, a little bit, why was he called up? I mean, if it was a World Cup, I probably would understand it, but you know, this is not qualification yet. Two smaller opponents, why? Yeah, but he's in good form, so maybe that's that's a reason, but it, it's not a reason pointing towards the future, to, 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 to be honest. Well, Sensi got the first goal quite early on in the 17th minute, then uh, Verratti makes another really nice goal. I mean, where he is slaloming around defenders and then shoots it out from the box. Really nicely taken goal uh, in the 32nd minute. That pretty much set Italy on the way. Um, then two penalties. Um, the second one also resulted in a red card. I think. Yes, second one resulted in a red card. Uh, Cagliarella scores both of these and becomes the oldest player for the to score ever to ever score for the Italian national team, the Squadra Azzurra, I wanted to say. So yeah, um, records. We had the last game. We had Moise Kane. I think it was the youngest to ever score, or maybe the first one that was born in the 2000s. Um, and then now Cagliarella, the oldest. Uh, speaking of Moise Kane, he gets also a goal, make it 5-0, and then the sixth goal was for Pavoletti. Thoroughly convincing. I mean, if you play a minnow at home, that's what you want to see. Uh, many goals, and you know, gives a lot of confidence to Italy, and I'm, I'm personally happy to see that. But the bigger game was, was between Bosnia and Greece. This was a two versus three matchup. Like Norway Sweden, which was three versus two, and Switzerland Denmark was a one versus two matchup. Um, I actually watched the first half of this, and boy, did Bosnia come out storming. I actually thought for the first few, few, few minutes, ah, Greece will probably shut it down a little bit more than Austria ever could, but then uh, it fell apart as soon as. Um, what was the name? Uh, is, um, Visca. Visca. Made the 1 0 in the 10th minute. Uh, it was crazy defending by Greece. 
Uh, there was a chance before that, but this uh, thing came from a cor corner where Vizca makes it a shot, the rebound falls to him and he just can net it home quite easy, easily. Then um, Pjanic gets a free kick outside of the box and the Greeks don't make a wall. And Pjanic just names for the lower corner. Yes, the uh, ball was swerving a little bit oddly, but 15th minute, it's 2-0 and that is really down to the Greeks not making a wall. Uh, if there's a wall, that ball does not go in. Uh, Pjanic does not have a minute. Crazy. And then the goalkeeper is standing in such a way that he's not even reacting. And at that point, uh, if it would have been 3 nil uh, for Bosnia at one, one point, I think Greece could not have complained. However, they fought themselves back in, in the game and uh, there were two chances by Donis. Uh, half chances, but you could see that Greece is getting something. And then they got something in the second half. And yeah, now I only saw highlights because I actually didn't want to jinx Greece anymore. I said, let's go to the other game. And when I saw that uh, a penalty was given, I actually stayed with that uh, game. I said, maybe if I don't watch, the Greeks will do something. And they did. They get the penalty, they convert. Shortly after, Pjanic gets a red card. And yeah, at that point I thought, yeah, now Greece has the upper hand and they used it to get, uh, so the Fortunis made the uh, converted penalty to make it 2-1 in the 64th. A minute later, Pjanic gets the red card and then uh, Kolovos makes it 2-2 uh, in the 84th. I actually was thinking that Greece might even get the winner at that point, but they didn't. But this 2-2 is a big result for Greece. Now, um, because you know, you got the point at the, probably your direct uh, opponent. And while Bosnia has the playoff spot secured, you know, the playoff, it's not a done deal. And to be honest, uh, Greece probably has more motivation to go for a second one because for them it will be really, really, really hard to get into the playoffs uh, since they finished. I think third in their Nations League group that almost certainly excludes them from any playoff considerations. Well, so what's the standings? Oh, I forgot the standings about Group F uh, before too. Uh, but let's do this. We have Italy plus eight, six points is leading that group. That's, I would say that's the emphatic start that you want to see from Italy. So uh, Greece is now in second place with four points and plus two. Bosnia also with four points plus one. Uh, Finland has three points, so they made up for their loss in Italy, which is an honorable loss. And I think those three will go for the second spot with Finland and Bosnia having a playoff spot uh, already. Uh, Armenia minus three uh, with zero points and Liechtenstein minus eight, also zero points. Uh, Round on that group and let's quickly look at Group F where Spain leads with two wins out of two games. I mean, as you would expect, six points plus three. Sweden has four pl points plus one. Romania, three plus two. I mean, Sweden beat Romania. Malta with three points, thanks to the Winnick and the Ferry Islands, uh, minus one. Norway now only one point, but you know, that's a big one point. They had two really tough games. Um, so minus one in the Ferry Islands, minus four with zero. So this is how it stands. Um, gonna be curious how both groups uh, pan out. I think that the first group they were talking about, the island, um, uh, um, group D, Ireland, Switzerland, Denmark, those three will make for the, to go for the two spots. Then the group F, Spain will qualify, and then it's Sweden, Romania, Norway. I think it will be between Sweden and Norway, if you ask me. Um, and I always say group J, the second spot, will be a three-way race. At the moment, slight advantage Greece, but we remain to be seen. Well, let me know which, you games, which games you watched. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Spain versus Austria in 99 on the 27th of March in the next video. Up until then, bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.